How's it going star seekers? Welcome back to the channel for yet another awesome review where this time we're going to be taking a look at a game called Zoids Wild Blast Unleashed. Now before playing this I was unfamiliar with Zoids Wild, I assumed it was some sort of toy franchise and I was partially right. Zoids Wild is an anime series based on the Zoids models and toys which date back to the early 1980s and they've come a long way since then with hundreds of Zoid types produced along with six different anime series and a ton of different video games, the latest being the one featured in this review. So let's see if Zoids Wild Blast Unleashed is a worthy addition to the franchise. My name's Gotcake and welcome to Star or Shovelware. So the game opens with a pretty awesome anime intro where we see the main protagonist Arashi and his pals from Team Freedom fighting against the game's baddies, otherwise known as the Dark Metal Empire. Now the game features a few different game modes but let's first focus on story mode which initially follows Arashi's journey alongside members of Team Freedom. If you don't have any prior knowledge of Zoids, the game does a decent job of explaining what Zoids are and how when human riders join forces with them, it unlocks a hidden power called Wild Blast, hence the game's title. So story mode is made up of well over a hundred different levels laid out in a tree-like structure with levels linked together and branching paths at specific points in it. To begin with we have to complete a couple of levels playing as Arashi to unlock additional trees which then allow us to play as other characters through a series of levels following their own unique storylines. Each level in the game sees us facing off against another character in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Now one good thing about story mode is that the first level we play with each character will always pit us against an unmanned Raptoryx, which provides us with an opportunity to learn our Zoids movesets. Zoids themselves come in the form of different dinosaurs, animals or insects including a raptor, a saber-toothed tiger, a crocodile and of course a T-Rex. Aside from their obvious differences in appearance, each comes with its own move set and generally the size of the Zoid determines its move speed, attack speed and damage. So Ruin, a raptor like Zoid is much faster than Grax, a giant Brachiosaurus Zoid but its attacks don't cause as much damage. When it comes to the game's combat mechanics, I was surprised to find that there was a considerable amount of depth to them, especially considering the game's target audience is kids between the ages of 6 and 10. Now that's not to say children are stupid or incapable of understanding more complex mechanics because god knows how many times I've had my ass kicked by a 10 year old on Call of Duty. So each Zoid comes with a basic set of heavy and light attacks which can be chained together to form a combo. They also get three special abilities known as wild actions seen in the bottom left of the screen. These can be activated by holding R or ZR and then hitting the relevant button and there's then a short cooldown period before the ability can be used again. Now I found that there was a wide variety of wild actions and there seemed to be great effort put into making each Zoid's abilities unique. In addition to them dealing damage, some of them can deal status effects such as poison or paralysis and others provided more of a utility use like buffing the Zoid's attack or defense or making it invisible. When it comes to defensive abilities you have a basic dodge maneuver which can be performed by hitting B in conjunction with a thumbstick direction and a guard stance activated by holding L or ZL which negates the majority of incoming damage. Whilst in this guard stance characters have a blue ring around them and attacking a guard in opponent will slowly break the guard but each character also gets a powerful guard breaker move performed by hitting the A button. Whilst guarding players can perform counter attacks against heavy attacks and with the right timing light attacks can be countered with heavy attacks both of which present an opening for a combo attack on your opponent. Now as you fight against opponents whilst playing as a member of Team Freedom or Team Supreme, another one of the game's factions, you build a meter in the top left of the screen by performing attacks, which when full will allow you to activate Wild Blast, transforming your Zoid into a more powerful form for a short period of time. Characters belonging to the Dark Metal Empire also have a similar ability, but theirs doesn't require charging and could be activated at any time, though it slowly drains their health whilst active. Now whilst in these forms some of your wild action abilities are enhanced dealing more damage and you're also able to activate your Zoid's ultimate ability which will end the transformation but deal huge amounts of damage if it lands on your opponent. These ultimate abilities also feature some pretty awesome visuals and I was pretty impressed by the effort that had been put into each Zoid's ultimates and in fact just in the game's visuals in general. 
Each side in the game looks great, features a ton of detail, and from what I can see the very accurate representations of their anime counterparts. Despite the details of the Zoids, the surrounding landscape and the different special effects, I don't think I once experienced any slowdown with the game's fast paced combat, which was good to see considering the performance issues with several games recently released on Switch. Combat remained fluid throughout the battles, and I didn't have any issues controlling my Zoid as performing attacks automatically moves you towards your opponent, but you still retain the freedom to move around the arena when not attacking or dodging. So getting back to story mode, battles generally require you to win two rounds against your opponent, but there are a couple of other battle types thrown into the mix for a bit of variety. These include fights against the Deleters, who are the Dark Metal Empire's minions, where you have to defeat 10 of them in a row, and other battles which are like single round gauntlets against multiple Zoids in a row, which can be surprisingly tough as your health doesn't regenerate after each fight. As you work your way through the different story arcs, you'll unlock new Zoids which can then be used in the game's battle modes, but one of the primary focuses of story mode is to unlock alternate versions of the Zoids. For instance, Arashi's storyline sees him tracking down a mysterious black Liger, which he has to face in several battles, and other characters' stories see them trying to locate or obtain new types of Zoid, after which they too can also be selected in battle mode. In addition to new Zoids, you can also unlock a bunch of gallery items which include pictures, music and models of Zoids which can be viewed up close in the Zoid viewer, so in all there's quite a lot of content to be unlocked in story mode. Now although this story mode basically boils down to battles against other Zoids, the developers have also put a decent amount of effort into each character's storylines. Prior to every battle there's a bit of an interaction between the characters, and despite me not knowing a thing about them before playing the game, I did start to get a sense of each character's personalities. I especially like the strange and eccentric Master Bug character, and the main baddie of the game, Gigaboss, with his white face makeup and ridiculous hairdo. Now it's worth noting that when it comes to the game's single player modes, which includes story mode and a continuous battle mode which features a short series of 7 battles, there are actually no difficulty settings. Now I didn't really find this to be an issue being an adult and familiar with fighting games, but I did encounter a few more challenging battles, especially the final couple in continuous battle mode, and I think younger children may struggle to win against some opponents. The options menu only contains audio and language settings, as well as a menu to rebind the game's controls, and the only place that you'll actually find difficulty settings is in the standard single battle mode, which allows you to customise your battles, select the arena you want to fight in, and change the difficulty setting of your computer opponent. This battle mode is also the only place that you can play two player versus mode, and if I were to criticise one thing it would be that the majority of the game is played in single player. When I was younger this would have been the type of game that I would have liked to play with my brother, and I think it would have been great if the game had included some sort of co-op tag team feature with its story mode. Lastly, it's also worth noting that there's no online multiplayer for the game, so you're limited to offline battles only, which is also a bit of a shame in my opinion. In all though, I had some good fun playing Zoids. It's a very solid fighting game and I enjoyed trying out its different characters, and learning a bit about a series which I no doubt would have been a fan of in my youth. So now let's get round to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for only the worst eShop titles. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay, and whether or not I feel it offers value for money to potential buyers. And so for a rating I'd give Zoids Wild Blast Unleashed. 3 out of 5 stars. Combat in the game is fluid, visual and sounds are great, and there's a decent amount of content if you're playing alone, but I feel that no online multiplayer and limited two player options potentially hamper the game's longevity. You can get Zoid's Wild Blast Unleashed from the UK Switch eShop for £34.99 or from the US eShop for $39.99. And that just about wraps up this review of Zoid's Wild Blast Unleashed. Hit that like button if this review helped you out, and leave your thoughts and opinions on the game and this review in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel for future Nintendo Switch reviews and content, and jump onto the Star Seekers Discord server to say hello. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care and game on.